Ja, øh, god eftermiddag og velkommen til øh, StudySeast webinar, som i dag specifikt handler om at studere på London South Bank University. Mit navn er Miki Kromann Jensen, og jeg er øh, stifter af StudySeed og arbejder også til daglig med øh, vejledning af studerende, som gerne vil til udlandet. Agendaen for i dag ser således ud. Hvad er StudySeed? Hvordan hjælper vi? Den del vil jeg selvfølgelig gerne præsentere for jer. Webinaret vil tage omkring en times tid. Øhm, når jeg lige kort har introduceret StudyC, så øh, giver jeg ordet til øh, min kollega fra London South Bank University, øh, Lizzie Nolan, som vil øh, dele sin præsentation af universitetet. Når Lizzie er færdig, så øh, vil jeg øh, kort komme ind på de øh, finansieringsmuligheder, der er, både via det, øh, det offentlige og øh, private. Og så til sidst vil vi meget gerne tage imod øh, spørgsmål. Optagelsen her, den, øh, den afslutter vi før Q&A-sessionen. Øh, så der er altså ikke, I skal ikke holde jer tilbage i forhold til spørgsmål. Der findes ikke dumme spørgsmål. Hvad hjælper Studies I med? Jamen sådan groft sagt, så er der egentlig to områder, vi beskæftiger os med. Det, der egentlig fylder mest, det er det, vi kalder studievejledning eller studier i udlandet. StudyC er officiel repræsentant for en række anerkendte udenlandske universiteter. Det, man vi repræsentant for i Danmark, det gode ved det, det er, at I som studerende, som søger vejledning og hjælp til ansøgning, kan få gratis hjælp af StudyC. Vi er finansieret af de universiteter, som vi samarbejder med. Og et af de universiteter, jamen det er jo London South Bank University, som vi skal tale om øh, i dag. Det andet øh, område, vi beskæftiger os med, det er praktik i udlandet. Vi har øh, mulighed for at hjælpe jer via vores praktikpakker til praktik i Australien og praktik i Irland. I USA, der har vi mulighed for at hjælpe jer med øh, J1 praktikvisum, hvis du allerede selv har fundet en praktikplads. Hvordan hjælper StudyC? Jamen, øh, det gør vi egentlig, øh, ja, vi, vi prøver på, der, der er rigtig mange ting at holde styr på, når man skal til, til udlandet, og det kan være noget af en jungle. og for rigtig mange, så er det jo ikke noget, man sådan lige har, har prøvet før. Det her med at studere i udlandet, det er jo for rigtig mange sådan en once in a lifetime øh, opportunity. Og hvor starter man så hen? Nogle af jer har måske brugt rigtig meget tid på at, at researche og, og, og ved måske allerede, hvor I gerne vil hen. Det kan være, det er derfor, I lige netop er med til det her webinar i dag, som jo handler om London South Bank University. Det kan også godt være, at I bare er med for at søge lidt inspiration og måske ved, at I vil gerne til udlandet, men ikke ved så meget mere end, end det. Og det er også helt fint. Vi kan være med helt fra starten, så hvis du har bare en tanke om, at du gerne vil til udlandet, men gerne vil finde ud af, at jamen, hvor kan du komme hen? Hvad er et godt match i forhold til det, du gerne vil studere? Hvad du har i karaktergennemsnit i forhold til, hvad du har råd til? Øh, eller hvad der kan lade sig gøre i forhold til, øh, hvis du skal på et studieophold og skal have det godkendt fra din uddannelsesinstitution hjemmefra? Tag endelig fat i os. Øh, du har mulighed for for eksempel at booke et vejledningsmøde hvor vi ligesom kan få afklaring omkring, hvad der er muligt for dig. Det er sådan afklaringsforløbet, eller første, første tanke. Hvis du er lidt længere i, i stadiet, og allerede ved, at øh, lad os sige, jeg vil gerne til, eller du vil gerne til London South Bank University, så kan vi naturligvis hjælpe dig med ansøgning til øh, universitetet. Øh, vi vil gennemgå alle dine dokumenter og tjekke, at alt er okay. Når alt er okay, jamen, øh, så vil vi efterfølgende kunne oprette din ansøgning, i, vores, eller i London South Banks ansøgningsportal. Og udover selvfølgelig at søge til øh, universitetet, så øh, kan der også, eller vil der oftest også være andre ansøgningsprocesser, som måske for, for, øh, foregår øh, sideløbende. Lad os sige, du vil på et studieophold, 
som en del af din uddannelse i Danmark, så skal du jo have de her fag, du læser i London, de skal forhåndsgodkendes, fordi ellers så får du ikke merit, og så, hvis ikke du får merit, øh, altså sådan så fagene kan indgå i din danske uddannelse, jamen så får du heller ikke de her dejlige penge, som man kan få med fra staten i form af udlandsstipendium. Øh, der er en masse dokumentation, dokumentation, der skal bruges i sådan en sammenhæng, og det, det hjælper vi dig med at, at indsamle. Hvis det er en hel uddannelse, du vil læse, for eksempel på London South Bank University, så skal uddannelsen jo på SU's fast track liste, og der er også en masse træls dokumentation og dokumenter osv., der skal på plads for at få den op på den liste. Det er heldigvis også noget, vi hjælper dig med, sådan så at du i bund og grund bare skal logge ind med din nem idé på min SU, og så, eller mit idé, som det hedder i dag, og så uploade de her ting her. Øhm. Når du har, har ansøgt øh, og blevet optaget, jeg kan glæde jer med, at over 98% af dem, der søger øh, igennem StudySea, bliver også optaget. Så det er jo heldigvis meget øh, positivt. Øh, især når vi snakker study abroad, så er, den, øh, er der, altså, hvis du opfylder adgangskravene som regel, vil du også kunne forvente at blive optaget. Det er ikke mig, der bestemmer det. Selvfølgelig, om du bliver optaget, det er det udenlandske universitet, der, der beslutter det. Men størst del af vores ansøger bliver optaget. Og når du så er optaget, så er du i det stadie, vi kalder øh, pre-departure-stadiet. Det er jo her, hvor du skal forberede dig på alle de her praktiske ting, udover at, at pakke kufferten selvfølgelig. Øh, så er der rigtig mange ting, der skal styr på. Det kan være alt fra boligsøgning til at, for eksempel at søge visum, øh, forsikringer osv., som skal på, på plads, før man rejser afsted. Og så de sige, jamen, så får du en pre-departure-guide specifikt til det land, du skal til. Du bliver inviteret til en Facebook-gruppe, hvis du skal til en af de destinationer, hvor vi har relativt mange studerende, så kan du connecte med andre, der skal afsted, eller måske nogen, der allerede er på destinationen. Øhm, du får legalt materiale tilsendt for os, øhm, fordi legalsøgning er noget, der giver rigtig god mening, når man skal studere i udlandet. Øhm, når du øh, så er klar til at rejse afsted, så er du det, vi kalder Study Abroad-studiet, Study Abroad Stadiet hedder det, og heldigvis så har vi, det er egentlig også som udgangspunkt krav, vi har for vores universiteter, der er god support for internationale studerende, men skulle der være et eller andet, eller du ikke lige ved, hvem du skal gå til på universitetet, så er du også altid velkommen til at kontakte Study C. Mange gange er det i forhold til visse dokumenter, der skal på plads i forhold til for eksempel SU, jamen så kan vi hjælpe dig med det, eller, eller forbinde dig med den rette person på universitetet. Når du så har ja, kommet hjem igen, har gennemført dit ophold eller din uddannelse, så er du en del af StudyC's øh, alumni-netværk, som jo består af andre unge mennesker, ikke nødvendigvis unge mennesker, men andre, som har været i udlandet, læst en uddannelse igennem, eller har været på et studieophold igennem StudyC, eller måske været på praktik. Øh, han har en Facebook-gruppe, han har en LinkedIn-gruppe, øh, og så øh, er der nogle forskellige rabatfordele, og nogle gange også nogle events, som, som du vil blive, øh, kunne blive inviteret til, når du er i vores alumni-netværk. Yes, det var sådan lige kort, hvad jeg havde øh, omkring StudyC. Now I would like to give the word to, um, to Lissy. Are you there? Yes, hi Mickey, I'm here. Perfect. Lissy, thank you so much for joining us. I want to enable you to uh, share, sorry, your, um, your presentation as well. I might have to allow yeah. that. <laughs> there we go i think it's working now yeah uh, lissy maybe i forgot to mention but once you've done your part um we'll do i'll do a brief um uh info on the funding options and then after that the, the students will be able to ask questions lovely okay thanks mickey so i'll just get that full screen one minute there we go can you see that full screen mickey can you just let me know yes perfect okay so hi everyone thank you so much for joining today um it's lovely to have you all here so maybe some of you have heard about london south bank university before you might have friends family know of someone or maybe today is the first time you know you're hearing about the university so either is fine eva's great Now, I would have been joined by my lovely colleague Kasia today, but unfortunately she's not well, okay, but I'll be here as well to answer any questions related to, you know, degree programs, bachelors, masters, and also study abroad as well, as best as I can, okay. So, 
would you maybe some of you have already been to the UK some of you have some ideas about the UK so this is a lot of things and aspects that people think about when they think about the UK and some famous things and stereotypes let's say about the country okay so we have you know we have Harry Potter we have tea tea you can come and have a lovely afternoon tea we have, you know, home of football, rugby, cricket, tennis, Wimbledon, you know, home of wonderful sports and events. We have the royal family as well, like you guys, you know, you have the Danish royal family. We also have the royal family and we have a lot of culture, history. You can visit, you know, historic places like um, wonderful castles and things like that. And also, what's the UK without a bit of rain, hey? So you always leave the house, you know, with an umbrella just in case. But, you know, don't be put off by that because with a bit of rain, you also have, you know, these lovely green destinations like this. Now, this is the Peak District, which is in the Midlands in the country. So when you're thinking about study destinations, there's some things to consider. So why study in the UK and, you know, why London? So you might feel when you're leaving Denmark, you're leaving your family and friends that you might be, you know, one of the only people doing it. However, when you arrive here, you'll realize that you will be surrounded by other international students. And actually generally the UK receives half a million international students from all over the world every year. And we estimated that by 2030, we'd receive 600,000 international students and actually, just now the previous intake we reached that amount so it's growing year on year and you'll have a wide range of choice you know it's not one size that fits all there is something though to suit everyone and we have over 140 universities to pick from here in the UK as well a UK qualification is you know recognized worldwide and it's got a great reputation and actually one in four world leaders have a UK qualification it's a little different as well than in Denmark. So our bachelors are just three years and our masters are just one year. So really you can gain, you know, up to a master's program, in, including the bachelors in the space of four years. And it doesn't mean the qualification is any less. It's the exact same qualification, same level. And the reason why as well you can gain it, you know, so in such a short space of time is because our programs are extremely specialized. So it's not like in the US. In the US, you will have a major to study, you will have your minors and the minors might not be in the field of the major. Lots of different subjects here in the UK. It's so specialized that from day one, let's say you're studying psychology to the day you finish, you're always studying aspects related to psychology. OK, this is for full time degree programs. The way we teach as well, it's a big transition from school. But then we think it's a smooth transition from from university to the workplace because we try and simulate, you know, working environments. We give you, you know, live projects, live briefs related to those in the workplace, teaching you how to critically think. And a key thing is gaining a lot of independence in your studies. OK, you're not just there revising for an exam. You know, you're learning how to solve problems. As well, we now allow students, so we, um, the UK government have announced that you will receive a two year graduate visa when you graduate with a bachelor's or a master's from the UK. So you don't need a sponsor. All you need to do is successfully have completed one of these and be in the UK with a valid visa when you apply, okay? And that gives you two years to find work in the UK. So you can really see yourself here long-term. So you're invested in your future. And as well, if anyone's been to London or know, you know, others who have been to London, you'll know what a vibrant, exciting city it is, OK? And it's been voted, you know, the best student city in the world on the second year running. If you come to London, you know, every day is new. If you even if you live here for years, there's always new places to explore. We have a lot of, you know, green open spaces, beautiful parks. We have museums that are free to enter, lots of history and culture, street food markets, you know, lots of diversity as well. It's just a real fantastic city. So you could be living in the heart of London. 
And you know, what we say is when a man is tired of London, he's tired of life because you know, it's pretty much impossible because there is always something new around the corner and lots of new people to meet and interesting people as well. So who are we, London South Bank University? So we opened our doors 130 years ago exactly. And the reason we you know, became a university was because we were noticing a lot of vacancies, a lot of demand in certain sectors, jobs needed to be filled, but there was a lack of skills in areas such as engineering, metalwork, even bakery. So we were creating courses to meet that demand in the sector. And it was involving a lot of work with the community. Now the university, we still stick by this philosophy, okay? When there's a demand in the sector, we write the courses for it. For example, computer sciences at the moment, you know, there's a lot of jobs, increasing jobs in tech, and we're writing courses related to, you know, artificial intelligence and data science to meet this demand. We also, on campus, we have a diverse environment, so we represent 130 countries worldwide. So not only in London is it diverse, but on campus as well. And it all adds to the learning experience. We as well are really proud of our facilities, so we invest over £50 million in our campus, okay? We actually have three campuses, but our main campus is just south in London, south of the River Thames, which I'll show you shortly. We try and bring, you know, modern facilities, so up-to-date technology, software to give you the best learning experience and that that you'd be using in the workplace. But we also, you know, preserve our old buildings. We have our original building from 130 years ago, yet we've just opened, you know, a new building in July as well. So the campus has this lovely blend of old versus new. A lot of our courses as well, carry a professional accreditation, okay? And I'll talk about that a bit later so you can understand, but this will also enhances your employability after. And, you know, we're fortunate, you know, in London, it's difficult for a lot of universities to just have one campus, you know, a lot have buildings dotted around, you know, the city and you'll be traveling from building between faculties. We're fortunate to have our campus in one place. So you can be living, and studying in the heart of London. So this is just where our students come from. So as I mentioned, you will not be alone. You know, if you come uh, to study with us, you'll meet students from all over the world and just under 3000 um, students come from overseas, okay? But we also find that our British students have lots of different backgrounds and different heritage as well. So when we say international students, it's those students that come on a visa. As I say, all our other students have all these interesting different backgrounds. So central London on your doorstep as well. So our campus is here where the, the blue circle is. So with this triangle here, our, cam our campus spans across here. And the three purple dots is our student accommodation. So maybe you recognize some of these landmarks like Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, London Eye. We have Piccadilly and Oxford Circus as well in Chinatown. These are all within reach of our campus. For example, you can walk to London Eye in around 15 minutes from campus, maybe a bit less as well. So you can live and study here. Our facilities as well, you know, you don't see lecture theatres. We do have lecture theatres, of course, and we have classrooms and seminars, but we also have these different facilities, you know, VR, we have a pub lab, editing suites, a gallery as well, and you know, work for our criminology students. And this is just some, you know, famous names that you might recognize that we as we've been associated with at the university, whether it be networking events and we have guest speakers, our alumni have worked there, um, some internship opportunities. So you can really see the connections you can build and the exposure you can have at the university. And OK, so, you know, I speak a lot about the university, but we also hear firsthand from our students as well. Um, feedback of the university and these students are also international students. So, you know, Andriana from Serbia said she liked, you know, she's a forensic science student, student and she loved how equipped the laboratories were and so specialised for her programme. We also have Marie, who's from Denmark, like yourselves, you know, if, if all of you are from Denmark. 
and she thought that the academics were really experts in the field and very supportive so she felt like she was part of the community. And other aspects students liked and why they chose the university was because although we have 15,000 students, class sizes are smaller, allowing you to have that more personal approach to the um, lecturers. And, you know, when I was a student in my um, lecture theatre, we were one of 150 people. Our lecturers didn't know who we were. Here at LSBU, I see because the class size is smaller, lecturers can build a rapport and get to know their students. And in that way, then, you know, they can um, adapt the content of the classes because they know the students, they know their interests and their ambition. And other people as well chose the university based on location, you know, being in London or having that British degree. So what can I study at the university? So we firstly, our courses are divided into different levels. OK, so first is a foundation which are, generally doesn't affect, you know, students from Denmark. It's usually when students come from a country that their high school qualification is lower than a British high school qualification. What does appeal to a lot of students from Denmark and other countries in Scandinavia is to study abroad, which I'll talk about next. Then obviously we have bachelor's degree, a top-up programme, so maybe you've studied a couple of years at a university in Denmark and you just want to do a final year in the UK. We have accelerated degrees, so you get a bachelor's just within two years. However, it's very intense. And if you're coming to the UK as well for an experience, I don't recommend that. We have masters and also PhD. And we also have eight faculties, which is on the right hand side. So firstly, I mentioned about study abroad. So why study abroad? Some students you choose to come, you know, during their bachelor's degree and you can study up to one year at the university. So you can choose one semester or one year to study at the university. So it allows you to come for that student experience, but not come for the whole three years of a programme or the whole of a master's programme. So you can come and get that student experience and also, you know, study um, courses that maybe you'll never study again or you've never studied, okay? It's also maybe about a student who's finished high school and they don't know what they want to do. So with study abroad, you can choose up to four different modules to study from um, our eight schools. So two of those modules have to be from one school and the remaining two can be across any of our schools. So we have, you know, courses related, let's say psychology, you can study a module related to psychology with architecture with law, so that's the variety you're getting. So what, what you can see here is on our website, I'm just gonna share this, we have a module directory, okay? So if you search study abroad on our website, you can see you know, the range of modules you can study. Another wonderful thing about study abroad is you have the op option to do an internship as well, an internship mod module, so you can gain that practical experience as well while coming with us. So you could just be here for six months, you could study three modules and then do an internship in another field as well. Some students you know, end up staying and they want to do their masters at the university. So you'll also get a discount on our postgraduate courses if you decide to do that. So our schools, so we have one of our first school is a school of applied science. So think, you know, psychology, biomedical science, we even have a bakery course and we have the oldest bakery school in the world. Our facilities as well, as I say, bring that practical edge for students. OK, so we have, for example, a pub lab environment. You know, students from psychology use it to look at addiction and conditioning. Psychometric testing as well is involved. And we've won as well many awards for our faculties here, such as being number one in London for career and graduate prospects. So it's just some photos of our School of Applied Science, there's some laboratories and our pub lab. Then we have the School of Arts and Creative Industries. So we are located in an area called Elephant and Castle. So our studios were named after the area, so Elephant Studios. And it's a five million pound studio where we have, you know, courses related to acting and performance, sound design, media production, film and TV practice. And these facilities include, you know, a studio, 
rehearsal theatre, photography studio, editing suites and auditorium. And our students actually all work together, put on a performance that's ticketed as well and open to the public. OK, so you see some of our students hard at work. We have some fashion students here at the top. We have, you know, some editing students and sound students, you know, you can really see how students work together. Then we have the School of Built Environment and Architectures as well, okay, so an architecture course will be three years long and then often students to be a, a fully certified architect would do another two year masters to make them an architect within five years. So architecture is just an exception for masters, it's two years, okay, and that's throughout all um, the country. And we have as well some lovely um, facilities as well under this school, for example, an anechoic chambers, you know, measures sounds and electromagnetic waves, things like that as well, part of the school. Okay, and then we have our students hard at work as well, some construction management, some product design students out and they're there doing live briefs, they've given live briefs and live projects to be assessed on. So not just, you know, exams. Then we have the School of Business. Now this is, you know, one of the most popular schools for obvious reasons. So you can do an international business management course. So it's always teaching you from a global aspect. And you can also specialise, you know, related to HR, accounting, economics, enterprise. Now, again, we're giving you live briefs, looking at things that are current, you know, in today's world, such as looking at sustainability in business, green economics, things like that. And part of the business school as well, we have something called the Clarence Centre. Now, it's the opportunity for you to network, attend, you know, um, events from guest speakers from the outside, you know, KPMG might come in and speak to students. Um, attend the centre as well to do, you know, upskill, learn leadership skills, attend workshops. And also students have the opportunity if they have a startup business to go there for help and advice as well. Now our business courses, a lot of them have this professional accreditation, which I was talking about before. So let's say you study accounting and finance. It's accredited by ACCA, which means that when you go find a job, you'll be exempt from certain ACCA papers, okay? Meaning it'll make you more employable because your employer will not have to pay for you to do and study these papers, okay? You'd already have a head start as well. And a lot of our business courses have the option between year two and three to do a placement year, okay? So some internships have included working with Coca-Cola, PwC and others as well. Now the internship's optional, and it is the responsibility of the student to find this, but we can help you with our contacts, okay? Okay. Then we have the School of Engineering. So a wide range of courses for engineering from computer science. So computer science falls under the engineering school, mechanical, electrical, chemical. And again, some lovely facilities here. You know, we have a 6,000 square meter, specialist engineering labs. And we were the first um, university in the UK to admit female engineering students back in 1920. Okay. Then we have two more schools to talk about. We have the School of Law and Social Sciences. So we have law, for example, corporate law. We have courses related as well to international relations into this school. We have criminology as well, which is very interesting. Uh, the international relations course is actually a um, really interesting course. There is a placement module as part of the course. So, you know, students have had the opportunity to be um, work for the international relations magazine, um, working as editors. And one of the opportunities recently that arose was to shadow one of the members of parliament. There's only two places, but you know, amazing opportunity as well for our international relations students. As well, on campus, we have a legal advice clinic. So our law students work at the legal advice clinic as legal advisors. It's open to the public. It's got over 5,000 clients as well. Um, so you're getting that hands-on exposure, okay? And that's just some students, you know, debating our law students, okay? And finally, we have the Institute of Health and Social Care, okay? Courses are a little limited for international students from this school, but I won't neglect it, I'll, I will mention it. 
So the courses that are available for international will be chiropractic, social work and physiotherapy as well. Um, if by any chance that for any reason you don't need a visa, then there are more courses available as well under this school, okay? But it, to be honest, it's not as popular for international students anyway. You know, sometimes it's a little more difficult to transfer back to your home country or elsewhere. So yeah, but it's something to consider if it's something you're interested in, okay? So entry requirements, so they really do vary your entry requirements. Um, so I'd recommend, obviously, when you're interested in a course, you know, talk to Study C, they can contact us, find out the entry for the course. Um, we do accept seven in English from high school as well, if you're interested in bachelors, um, or alternatively, we accept IELTS or equivalent, for example, TOEFL, Cambridge, Pearson, and then for our bachelor's programs, I'm sorry, for our master's programs, you'll need minimum seven in your bachelor's degree from maybe your Danish university or equivalent, okay? And an IELTS of 6.5 overall with 5.5 in each band. We have January applications which are open um, and we are still waiting to open our September applications, okay? We hope that they will open um, early next month, okay? They should be open by early next month. We're waiting for just the official um, date. But what you would need is you can apply, okay, and you're in good hands. So you can apply with Study C. And generally, we ask for these documents at the bottom. Don't worry if you have not got them all. Um, you can make the application. If we're happy with your application, we'll make you a conditional offer. So let's say you're waiting for your high school diploma uh, or say an English test or even a letter of recommendation from your teacher, you can submit it at a later date. But we do recommend apply, you know, as soon as it's possible, as early as it's possible. Um, even if you're not sure, you definitely want to come because, you know, I was talking to Mickey earlier, the demand, you know, in study, not just at the university here, but in the UK is great. You know, it's huge, which is great news, but that means places are filling as well. OK, so just to avoid disappointment. So these are our courses available for January. We just have a small range of courses, but please note for September, all our courses will be available, okay, for entry. Okay, so this is our current tuition fees as well, okay? So they're just under 16,000 pounds a year. And if you get a high grade, maybe in school or in your bachelor's program, if you're applying for master's, you may be eligible as well for a £3,000 scholarship. So, you know, when you make the application and you give your grades, admissions will apply it automatically. So you wouldn't need to actually um, apply for a scholarship. It will be given to you if you have the right grades for it, okay? So our accommodation, you know, where will you live? So we're fortunate as well as the university to have our own student accommodation, meaning everyone you live with, in the accommodation will be London South Bank students, okay? Mostly it's first year students um, that are living there. And then by the second year, people choose to find, um, you know, their own house with other friends they've met and so on. But you can see here, the yellow triangle is our campus. And these three purple circles or ovals is our student accommodation. So this is the one furthest away and it's only 10 minute walk from campus, okay? And these ones are right on the doorstep. And it's so cool. I think it's amazing to be a student. You know, you walk out of these, this accommodation, let's say David Bomberg House, and you can see the Shard. You can walk to Borough Market. You can walk to Tower Bridge, you know? Imagine that. And really, you know, the accommodation is what? 600 pound, the cheapest option. Um, with all bills included, so £600 a month, may I say, sorry, um, all bills included, um, and to live in central London, that is amazing, you know, and so the accommodation, it really varies depending on your budget, so if you've got more of a lower budget, you can choose to share with more students, and it'd be more of a sociable flat, um, and you'll share a bathroom, but you'll always have your own bedroom, okay, so here's an idea of like a more of a lower budget kitchen, Here's an idea of more of a higher budget kitchen, okay? So you'll be sharing with less people. So apartment sizes start from three, but there can be five, there can be six, and there can be eight, okay? But as I say, you'll always have your own bedroom, 
study space as well. It's furnished, okay, and all bills included. There's always a communal space as well in the apartments, sorry, in the, well, in the apartments, but also in the buildings, there's a communal space. So you can socialize with students from other apartments as well. And there's also security, so you'll always feel very safe. Support as well we provide on campus. So maybe help with accommodation. You know, you might have some issues, we hope not, but there's people there to talk to. Um, you know, any support with any disabilities or learning needs, uh, we offer that as well. We also have employment advice, career advice. You can work, you know, if you have a visa, you can work up to 20 weeks during term time, which is more than enough, I think, when you have to study and full time during holidays. And we do also have student ambassadors that work for us. And we always look for, you know, international student ambassadors more and more. Um, so minimum wage in the UK is just over eight pounds and you would be earning 13 pounds an hour as a, a student ambassador. So it's really nice. Um, we offer help with budgeting as well. You know, sometimes students are leaving home for the first time and they get a bit excited with their money and they run out. So we help with budgeting. Also as well, you know, when times might be stressful or there might be personal issues or anything else, we have counselling services, uh, wellbeing support um, and mental health support as well. And we have general advice. So things that might seem so simple to us here might be more complicated for someone who's new to the UK. So we have, you know, we have advice for just help to open a bank account or how to register with a doctor. And also student experience, you don't want to be studying, you know, 100% of the time, you need to have some activities, some fun, you know, socialize. So we have, you know, a new state of the art gym at the university that offers lots of different fitness classes like yoga, Zumba, exercise, badminton. Um, you can also have a personal trainer and get your own personalized programs. You can even do some coaching courses as well. So it's really nice. And also we have a lot of societies. So over 40 societies related to maybe specific hobbies you might have. It could be related to languages or certain films that you like, or, you know, it could be painting. And if a society doesn't exist, you can create one as well. So that's really nice. And when you start at the university in September, we have a welcome week where you have the opportunity to sign up to all these societies as well, um, which I always recommend to do. You know, it's a really nice way to meet people. And what's really good as well is you can either carry on with existing hobbies or explore new hobbies as well. So here on the left, we have, you know, one of our personal trainers, you know, consulting a student. And on the right, it's part of our human performance centre as well. And again, I said you might want to find new hobbies or continue with existing, but you can see some of these, you know, different activities you can get involved with. So we have fencing, basketball, archery. So it's really nice. And also on campus, we have a student union. So play a bit of pool. We have um, some events as well. We have a bar where there could be karaoke nights. You know, if anyone can sing or can't sing, you know, after a few drinks. Um, trivia nights, everything like that. So it's really nice. So yeah, so obviously, you know, maybe some of you have got your heart set on studying in the UK. Maybe some of you are just maybe researching at the moment. I just recommend do as much research as possible. Okay, um, speak to anyone, you know, you can, who had experience studying overseas, it will help a lot. We have social media you can check out as well, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube channels as well. You're always welcome to send us an email. You know, no question is a silly question. So please ask away. And yeah, just follow your dreams, okay? Many students say that they it was the best decision they ever made and they don't regret it. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Lissy. That was a great presentation of uh, both uh, LSBU and, and London. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, everyone. So I wonder, uh, I mean, also, especially highlight, and you talked about, Lizzie, the, the housing uh, situation. So this is kind of an, a unique opportunity for students to be living centrally in London, 
but in affordable student housing, because in general, housing is very expensive in, in London. So, so LSBU provides this um, opportunity, which is, to be honest, also a great reason that a lot of our students are choosing to, to apply and, and, and study um, with you. Uh, the, um, so I visited, I, I can't, maybe three or four years ago, visited the uh, campus. And besides, of course, the housing very nice, but also the facility is very modern, the architecture, the wood, uh, the glass wood combination and so on. Um, really, really um, nice. And, and we, we get um, we get really good feedback from the students we send as well. So, yeah. so very happy with that. Absolutely, Mickey. And we've just opened a new building now called The Hub. Um, and that's where we've got the new state of the art gym. I mean, I was very impressed with the facilities and a brand new library, which is a rooftop one. So there's a lovely little terrace for students to go out in. And it's just got that really relaxed atmosphere for students, real open space. So, you know, you visited a few years ago and, you know, the facilities just change constantly. So they've even been- I have to visit you again, I guess. You will, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the tuition as well, so I just want to point out for study abroad, so the tuition you mentioned was for degree-seeking students, so if, study, if you are coming for a semester, if you're a study abroad student, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper, I guess it's discounted in a sense, right? It is, yes. 6,500 or around that level for a semester. Exactly, yes, so that was just full-time program, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool, all right, all right. Um, I'm going to jump over to... Danish again and talk about the money matters in Danish. <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. Back to you, listen with the questions at the end. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Um, super. Um, the cost of a little penny, the swear, I studied in Ulan. One thing is, of course, that there is an intuition fee, also a study outgift, that must be betales en anden ting er selvfølgelig også at der er lidt udgifter til at rejse afsted og lidt udgifter til øh, selvfølgelig også øh, under ophold til leve, leveomkostninger hvis vi snakker om den, den største sådan ekstra udgift der er altså øh, tuition fees øh, så er der heldigvis øh, hjælp at hente hjemmefra øh, fra den danske stat øh, i form af udlandsstipendiet så udlandsstipendieordningen blev til i 2008 og har egentlig gjort, at man øh, som dansker kan tage sit taxametertilskud med til udlandet. Øh, ja, hvad betyder det? Ja, det vil egentlig sige, at de penge, som en dansk uddannelsesinstitution modtager af staten, øh, kan man i visse tilfælde tage med til at finansiere helt eller delvis den studieafgift, der er på det udenlandske universitet. Der er selvfølgelig nogle regler og krav og begrænsninger osv., og så videre. Øh, sådan tidsmæssigt, så må det maks være to år, det to år i perioder, man kan få udlandsstipendium med. Man kan få det med enten til en hel uddannelse på kandidatniveau. Det vil sige, du kan ikke få det med til bacheloren, men du kan få det med til kandidatoverbygningen, men igen i maks to år. Du kan også få det med til studieophold, og det kan både være på bachelorniveau eller, eller kandidatniveau. Hvis nu du bruger et semester på Bats, altså et studieophold på din bachelor, så har du så kun halvandet års udlandsstipendium tilbage. Det betyder ikke så meget, hvis det er Storbritannien, fordi der, der er en masteruddannelse jo kun et år, og det er den også visse andre steder i verden. Så ikke fordi det nødvendigvis behøver at være et problem. Ja, hvor mange penge får man så med? Satserne de afhænger til dels af den uddannelse, du, du læser. Hvis vi starter med at kigge på udlandsstipendium til studieophold, så, øh, så har vi, hvad hedder det, øh, satserne her. Bemærk, at det er per semester, det er angivet per semester, så hvis du går ind og kigger på SU's øh, hjemmeside, så står der dobbelt så høje beløb, fordi det er per år. Øh, bemærk også, at det er angivet per semester af 30 ECTS, så faktisk det antal ECTS, du får øh, med rigtig overført, det, det har også en indflydelse på det beløb, du får med i udlandsstipendium. Hvis vi så kigger på universitetsuddannelser, så ligger taksten på mellem, altså mindstesatsen, den hedder 22.150 kroner øh, per øh, semester, øh, og så går den op til 46.150 kroner. Hvem får hvad? Jamen det er typisk øh, øh, studerende på humanistiske uddannelser, samfundsvidenskabelige uddannelser, øh, business øh, for eksempel også, som får den lave sats hvor at øh, ingeniørstuderende, medicinstuderende, øh, IT-studerende, øh, studerende på de øh, dyre uddannelser får den høje sats. 
Og så er der også nogle uddannelser, som ligger sådan ind imellem kommunikation, for eksempel og medier, der er det typisk en mellemsats på, på cirka 31-32.000 kroner per øh, semester. Det er værd også lige at bemærke, at lad os sige, at du er ingeniørstuderende, og du egentlig er hvad kan man sige, på den høje sats. Hvis du nu vælger, og det er der mange ingeniørstuderende, der kan, for eksempel managementfag eller businessfag, når du tager til udlandet, så kan du altså godt risikere, at så får du den lave sats med, øh, altså de 22.160 kroner. Det går desværre ikke den anden vej. Det er ikke sådan, at hvis du som businessstuderende tager ingeniørfag, at du så kan få den høje sats med desværre. Så det er værd, hvis man har et semester med valgfag, man er på en, en dyre uddannelse, så er det værd at, at, måske at tænke over at vælge nogle tekniske fag, altså de lidt dyre fag. Øhm, det her det er vejledende, fordi det er egentlig ens SU-kontor, man skal søge udlandsstipendiet øh, igennem, øh, og som egentlig t- øh, i sidste ende øh, beslutter, hvor meget du skal med. Du kan jo prøve, og de, de danske uddannelsesinstitutioner er ikke sådan særlig glade for at tale om udlandsstipendium eller for selv arrangeret studieophold, og øh, det har noget at gøre med økonomi, øh, simpelthen, fordi når du får udlandsstipendium med, så mister øh, den danske uddannelsesinstitution jo så tilsvarende det, de penge. Øh, så de danske uddannelsesinstitutioner er først og fremmest interesseret i, at man rejser ud på, på udveksling øh, igennem skolens øh, egne øh, aftaler, da det jo ikke øh, koster den danske uddannelsesinstitution nogen penge. Men, men, men derfor kan I jo altid forhøre jer, og vi kan få det præcis beløb på, hvor meget I kan få med i, i udlandsstipendium. Professionsbacheloruddannelse, den varierer mellem 28.000 og 68.300 kroner. Erhvervsakademiuddannelser, det er fra 28.000 til 54.000. Øh, typisk er det for eksempel markedsføringsøkonomer eller studerende, der læser international handel og markedsføring, øh, som får øh, den lave sats. Og så kan det være multimediedesign eller datematikere, som typisk, eller bygningskonstruktører, som får den, den høje sats. Skibsfører, som er maskinmester, der er den publiceret sats 54.000 per, per semester. Så det er så udlandsstipendiet. Det er, det er ikke at forveksle med, med legater. Altså det er nogle, man skal sådan set bare være, være SU-berettet øh, for at kunne få udlandsstipendium med. Og så skal man jo selvfølgelig have opholdet, øh, eller fagene forhåndsgodkendt, så man skal kunne få merit for de fag, man læser i udlandet. Øh. Så, så vil man være berettiget til udlandsstipendium. Øhm, SU kan jo også tage med til udlandet. Det vil jo selvfølgelig blive udboende SU. Øh, så er der SU-lån, som man kan supplere med. Og så er der også det her øh, ekstra mulighed for at låne øh, via det her udlandsstudielån. Så PT eller i år, eller 2022, der, der er det op til 111.222 kroner for at være helt præcis. Øh, du kan aldrig, altså det du kan låne, det er forskellen mellem, mellem den faktiske studieafgift og så udlandsstipendiet. Så det vil sige, at hvis studieafgiften er højere end udlandsstipendiet, så kan du låne, men du kan dog ikke låne mere end de 111.222 kroner. Hvis vi øh, kigger på, øh, lad os sige, du overvejer at læse en hel kandidat- eller masteruddannelse i udlandet. Her der har jeg angivet satserne øh, for en toårig uddannelse. Hvis det nu er på LSBU eller England, du skal læse, og den kun er etårig, så skal du dividere de her øh, beløb med to. Øhm, igen, humanistiske øh, samfundsvidenskabelige uddannelser, 88.600 per, øh, eller for en toårig uddannelse, halvdelen, hvis det er en etårig og så går den op til 184.600 kroner, hvilket er ret mange penge. Det betyder sådan set en del steder i verden, at du øh, på den sats faktisk kan læse øh, din, din uddannelse gratis, hvis det er inden for en af de her øh, fagområder. Og igen, SU, SU-lån og udlandsstipendium, eller undskyld, udlandsstudielån er også muligt. Andre finansieringsmuligheder inkluderer legater og der har vi rigtig mange af vores studerende, som får øh, rigtig mange penge ind øh, den vej. Og det siger jeg altid, det er simpelthen værd at øh, lægge sin tid i at søge legater. Det er lidt krævende, fordi det er lidt ligesom at søge jobs. Øh, en ting er selvfølgelig den her øh, research, du skal igennem for at finde frem til, hvilke fonde du er kvalificeret til at søge. Og det er altså ikke bare sådan, at du kan tage udgangspunkt i samme liste som for eksempel din sidekammerat eller medstuderende, fordi det er ofte baseret på meget, meget personlige kriterier. Så der kan være rigtig meget, du går glip af, hvis ikke du selv laver research, og går ind og søger. Og der er forskellige søgefunktioner online, hvor du kan søge efter det gate og filtrere og sortere osv. Og så, så det er værd at bruge tid på det. Og ellers øh, så er det selvfølgelig også værd at, f- at søge eller <laughs> flittigt, men husk altid selvfølgelig at målrette dine ansøgninger, når du søger det gate 
Vi har lidt materiale, når du søger igennem Stodicy, som vi deler, blandt andet et eksempel på god legatansøgning, inklusiv bilag og coverletter osv. Og øh, vi kan henvise til nogle af de steder, hvor du kan søge øh, og finde legaterne. Øh, og så har vi også øh, budgetskabeloner. Der skal altid et budget vedlægges, når du søger, søger legater. Øh. Scholarships, øh, Lissi var også lidt inde på det, for eksempel LSBU har nogle scholarships. Når jeg skriver scholarships, så er det jo også en form for stipendium. Øh, oftest vil det være et partial scholarship, det vil sige, øh, som dækker måske en procentvis eller et fast beløb, som så fratrækker studieafgiften. Så det er næsten en form for rabat, øh, du får fra det udenlandske universitet. Nogle gange kan det være baseret på gode karakterer, men det er altså ikke altid. Det kan også nogle gange være scholarships, der er baseret på, hvor i verden du kommer fra. Nogle scholarships er automatiske, og andre er ret svære at få. Arbejde under de studier eller efter kan være en mulighed også. Banklån, kassekredit, personlig opsparing, måske forældre. Yes, det er sådan lige meget hurtigt omkring øh, finansieringsmuligheder. Øhm, nu har vi talt meget om LSBU, og jeg har talt selvfølgelig også lidt om studies, men bare lige for at opsummere, øh, hvorfor at... Øh, eller hvilke fordele der er ved at søge igennem StudyC. Som nævnt, så er det gratis, altså I skal ikke betale noget til StudyC. Øh, I afregner direkte med det universitet, I skal, I skal til. Øh, du får personlig vejledning igennem hele øh, forløbet. Øh, så hvis der er et eller andet, der ikke giver mening, så, så ring eller skriv, så skal vi nok gøre dig, gøre dig lidt klogere på det. Øh, og 98 procent af vores ansøgere øh, optages. Det er klart, at Procenten, eller procentdelen er højere, når det er, at vi snakker study abroad, altså folk, der kun skal læse et semester, mod hvis man skal læse en helt anden øh, hel ansøgning. Øh, Lise, hun snakkede lidt om ved, ved LSBU, at der har været rigtig mange ansøgere i år, og det, og det har betydet på hele uddannelser, at der faktisk har været selv ansøgere, der blev optaget, men som så ikke alligevel kunne få deres plads. Så hvis du overvejer i hvert fald at søge ind på en hel uddannelse, så vil vi stadig anbefale, at du søger øh, tidligt, i stedet for last minute. Heldigvis ved Study Abroad, der er alle vores, øh, altså, er blevet, øh, altså der har alle vores øh, i år blevet optaget og har fået deres plads og så videre. Der har de ikke begrænset det til trods for, for pladsmangel. Øh, søg med kort varsel, det er jo ikke noget, jeg vil opfordre til, men hvis vi snakker specifikt Study Abroad, hvor man har en anden mulighed for for eksempel at søge udveksling øh, igennem sit eget universitet, øh, så er det ved udveksling ofte, at fristen måske ligger et år i forvejen. Øh, det det behøver, du behøver ikke søge så tidligt, når du søger igennem studies. Det er fint, hvis du gør det, men, men det er ikke nødvendigt. Altså, øh, vi går op i den frist, som det udenlandske universitet har. Øh, frem for, og, øh, der er mange, der ikke ved det, men når ens eget universitet har en frist, så gælder den egentlig kun, hvis man søger udveksling, og ikke nødvendigvis, hvis man søger selvlanceret studieophold. Når det er sagt, så skal I stadig have tid til at søge om øh, merit og forhåndsrådkendelse, og der kan jo også være nogle frister der, og om ikke andet, så er der måske en behandlingstid, der tager en måned eller to. Så ikke, hvis du kan undlade at søge i sidste øjeblik, så er det rigtig, rigtig fint. Øh, gratis verificering af eks- eksamenspapir kan vi øh, gøre, du skal ikke ud og betale en, øh, et firma for det. Øhm, som udgangspunkt har vi ikke begrænsninger på pladser, i hvert fald ikke når vi snakker study abroad, så hvis du vil afsted med en medstuderende eller kæreste eller en gruppe, så er det helt fint. Modsat hvor du, hvis du søger udveksling gennem din egen skole, så er det ofte dem, der har, så er der et begrænset antal pladser, og det er dem, der får, eller har højeste karakterer, som, som får studiepladserne. Tips til legatansøgning, eksempel på den gode ansøgning. Øhm, mød studerende via vores, vores Facebook-grupper. Øhm, bliv en del af vores lumlenetværk mulighed for at læse på en af verdens bedste universiteter eller mest populære destinationer. Og øh, vel blandt mere end 70, der skulle faktisk stå 80 universiteter i, i hele verden. Og overblik over økonomi og finansieringsmuligheder kan vi altid hjælpe dig med også. Og så er der også lidt her omkring undtagelser i optagelseskriterier. Lissi var selv lidt inde på det, at øh, for eksempel engelsk, hvis man vil, blandt andet ved LSBU vil søge ind der, jamen, så kan du undlade at tage en engelsk sprogtest, hvis du har en vis karakter i, øh, i engelsk fra, øh, fra gymnasiet. Sådan er det ved en del af vores universiteter heldigvis. Næste, næste skridt, øh, før vi lige går til spørgsmål, så øh, hvis det her generelt selvfølgelig, ja, hvis London South Bank er interessant for dig, og du gerne vil vide mere, øh, man har brug for noget, noget afklaring, så tag fat i os, så, så kan vi eventuelt booke et vejledningsmøde. Det kan foregå over telefon eller Zoom. Du kan også sende en mail selvfølgelig med spørgsmål, så skal vi nok besvare den bedst muligt. 
er du allerede klar til at søge, jamen så, øh, så tager også fat i os. Øhm, hvis vi snakker specifikt for London South Bank, så har StudyC sit eget login, øh, og kan egentlig oprette ansøgningen øh, på vegne af dig. Øhm, det er vigtigt, hvis du vil have hjælp fra StudyC, at du så øh, tager fat i os, øh, før du søger, og du ikke går ind og opretter en ansøgning direkte ved øh, universitetet. Min e-mail, den hedder mikisnabelagstudyc.dk og min, mit, mit telefonnummer 69 13 70 23. Yes, så vil jeg. Jo, der var faktisk en ting, jeg gerne lige vil vise jer. Nu skal jeg se, om jeg kan få det til at fungere. Jeg håber, at I kan se StudyC's hjemmeside nu, eller så må I lige skrive ned i chatten. Oh, så lige to sekunder. Yes. Øhm, ja, nej, det går helt galt. Det har vi prøvet igen. Sådan der. <laughs> Nå, det jeg gerne lige vil vise jer, hvis I vil vide lidt mere om, øh, om London South Bank, og hvor I finder de her relevante informationer. Hvis I går ind på studiesid.dk, øh, og så klikker på universiteter, og efterfølgende øh, går ned her og finder England, så står London South Bank her. Og hvis I skruer lidt ned, her der får I et overblik over, hvad det er for en type ophold, vi kan hjælpe med øh, på London South Bank University. Her, og det der mangler lidt overse, der er altså forskellige sektioner her. For eksempel, hvis du ved, hvad det er for nogle uddannelser, eller hvordan du, hvordan du finder fag, så klikker du her på uddannelser. Skru lidt ned. Hvis det er et study abroad ophold, du er ude efter, så kan du få den her sektion ud, og så vil der linkes til blandt andet, hvor du finder fagene henne på, på LSBU's øh, hjemmeside. Der vil stå en beskrivelse af det her. Øh, hvad betyder fagkoderne? Hvor mange af de, af de britiske eller engelske point, altså CATS, skal du læse for, at det svarer til for eksempel et dansk semester af 30 i CTS? Vi vil også linke til, hvor du finder øh, fagbeskrivelserne. Øh, og det er nogle ting, du skal bruge, hvis det er, at du skal på et meritgivende studieophold. Hvis det er helt uddannelse, for eksempel du vil søge, jamen, så vil vi linke lidt til her, hvor du kan se, finde den relevante information på universitetets hjemmeside. Det står lidt omkring studieperioderne, ansøgningsfrister, ø- økonomi, hvad koster det? Ø- ja, bolig også, vil vi også linke til her osv. Så, så der er en masse god og relevant information ø- herinde. Yes, det var lige, ø- hvad jeg havde. Så stopper jeg lige op.